solid hold. Okay, so our axial tool holders are pretty straightforward. Setting up a radial tool holder can be a bit more complicated, but it's really important that we get this right. If our radial holders are off at all, our tool is not going to align with our x-axis. This means our tools could wear out prematurely or even break. This is why on the back of all of our radial tool holders, they've given us some set screws. Now we're going to press a 10 millimeter pin into our turret. Then when we put our radial tools in, we're going to have that pin sticking out that we can drive our set screws up against to adjust the angle on our radial tool holders. Now I'm going to grab my, my pin and some tools here and we're going to go ahead and drive a pin into the turret on our lathe. Now these dowel pins actually come with your live tooling. They're typically about 28 to 30 millimeters long. Now if you just grabbed a hammer and pounded them into the 10 millimeter hole on your turret, you might sink them in so far that there's not enough exposed pin for the set screws in your live tooling to grab a hold of. We need 12 millimeters of exposed pin for those set screws to grab a hold of. So what I've done here is grab some round stock and I went ahead and machined in a pocket, a slip fit for this 10 millimeter pin, and I made that pocket 12 millimeters deep. Now we're going to use this as an insert tool to drive this pin into the turret. Now when we put these pins in, we need to be careful. There's an M6 by one threaded hole on one end. This hole is so we can yank the pin out later if we have to. So when you're putting this pin in, make sure the threaded hole is facing you, not facing towards the turret. Got it? Okay, great. I'm going to mount this in my adapter and drive in my pin. Perfect. We now have 12 millimeters of exposed pin, just what you wanted. Now this was a pretty typical pin install. Let me show you our VB24 turret. Now if you have a super speed lathe, then there's a six millimeter step on the surface where we press our pins in. So we're gonna wanna press our pins in, leaving 18 millimeters exposed. That's the 12 millimeters we need from this mounting surface, plus another six millimeters to account for this step. Now I've gone ahead and milled a, another pocket into my stock here, 18 millimeters deep. With this, we're gonna end up with 18 millimeters of exposed pin above this surface. And we're looking for that ideal 12 millimeters of exposed pin above our mating surface. Now, if you're tapping in these pins manually, you're gonna to wanna to go slowly. If you go too deep, there won't be enough pin exposed for our set screws to grab a hold of. And if you don't go in far enough, your pin won't be grabbing the turret at all. And when you tighten those set screws, it's just gonna wobble its way out. Okay, so with our pin properly installed, we can mount our radial tool holder and align it. After it's mounted, we're gonna snug just lightly that M10 bolt. We'll then mount a ground shaft into our collet. I'm using an extension. You can use a dowel pin or even a tool. From here, I'm gonna take an indicator on a mag base and indicate along the side of that ground shaft, seeing how straight this holder is. If it's not already straight, we can loosen and tighten these set screws against that 10 millimeter pin. Now, once you've gotten this straight, you'll want to lightly tighten both set screws against the pin. When done, you're gonna go ahead and finish tightening that M10 bolt on the side. So that's it. That's how we align our radial tool holders. Now, one last thing before we show you how to touch off your tools. What if you need to get these pins out? Well, there's some easy methods. The easiest way is just to grab an M6 by one bolt and thread it into that threaded end of your pin. Once that's done, we're gonna use an actual pin puller. Now you can find these on the internet for about 65 bucks. All we've gotta do is lock it over the head of the bolt and slide. Now if you don't have an actual pin puller, you can just grab a socket an M6 bolt and some washers. Place that over the dowel pin, tighten the bolt, and it'll draw the pin right out of the turret. Well, that's it. 
Let's go back to our machine and start setting some offsets. Well, we've made our tools straight, so now all we've got to do is touch them off. Now, typically for end mills used in live tool holders, we're going to touch them off along their center lines. Now, for an axial tool holder, this is pretty simple. All we've got to do is sweep in the tool holder with an indicator dialed in on the tool, and we've got our X and maybe our XY values. Now, for the tip of the tool, we're going to touch that off along the Z axis, just like you would any other drill. Radial tools can be a little more complicated. We can't reach the center line of that end mill. So what we're going to do is touch off on the tip of the end mill along the X axis, kind of like a normal turning tool. And for the Z axis, we're going to touch off along the outer diameter of that end mill. Then we're going to shift our tool offset by the radius. Now, if we've done everything right, I should be able to command my tool to Z0 and have the center line of that end mill line up perfectly with the Z0 face of my part. Now this final tip is for those of you that would like to touch off your radial live tooling using your ATP arm, your automatic tool presetter. And we can do this. Now I've already brought my arm down and I've jogged my end mill just above and to the right of my probe tip. Now I've created a program in memory and it's really got just one real line of code, M134P800. This is gonna start my live tooling with an M134 at 800 RPMs, P800. I'm using an M134, not an M133, because I want my live tooling to spin backwards, not forward. Okay, so with this program active in memory, I'm gonna to go to the IPS probing page. I'm gonna select manual cycle, because I've already jogged my tool above my probe. I'm gonna to use tool offset nine, because I'm probing tool nine. And here's the important part. I'm gonna use tool tip direction three. Now, this is the same cycle we would use for an OD turning tool. It's going to come in from the right and come down in the X, which is going to work just great for our end mill. So I follow the directions on screen, press F4 to record output to a program. Now I just insert this code into my program right after my M134, and we're ready to run. Let me press cycle start, and we'll see what it does. That looked perfect. It touched off on the side of the tool and the tip of the tool in the X. But remember, we touched off on the OD, the side of the tool, when we really wanted to touch off on the center, but that wasn't possible. So now we need to make an adjustment. We have to subtract the tool radius from our Z tool offset. So I'm gonna go to my offset page, highlight tool nine, because that's the tool I used. And because I'm using a half inch end mill, I'm gonna subtract 0.25 from my Z tool offset. This is gonna put that radial live tool back on center instead of the left edge. Well, you should now be able to set up your live tooling with confidence. Now, for more information on live tooling, be sure to download the latest Haas lathe manual from the Haas DIY site, diy.haascnc.com. Now, we mentioned earlier that we're planning on making a bunch of tip of the day videos on live tooling topics. If you don't wanna miss any of those and you don't, be sure to click on the subscribe button at the end of this video. That's it, and thanks for watching this Haas Tip of the Day.